New government figures confirm more than 100,000 migrants have now crossed the English Channel in the last five and a half years since the current records began. Yesterday saw 755 people coming across in small boats, the highest daily number this year. Well, in a moment, we'll cross live to Dover with Sadia Chowdhury. But first, let's get the political reaction. Rob Powell joins us with that. And Rob, this 100,000 figure uh, number is, is clearly going to grab some headlines. Perhaps, though, more relevant is that yesterday individually was the highest uh, day of the year for crossings. And those short term ongoing numbers are perhaps more significant. Yeah, in many ways, the 100,000 mark is something of a, a sort of arbitrary point because it, it only started in 2018 when they started counting small boat crossings, albeit before then it was um, less of an issue. It, it doesn't include people who are not detected. It doesn't include people that arrive in the country in other ways um, as well. As you say, the individual daily figure, yesterday 14 boats were detected carrying 755 people. That is the highest um, this year. The previous was 686. It is lower than we've seen in 2021 and 2022, though, where we've had daily totals of almost 1,300. Um, uh, I guess another way of trying to figure out how big a figure some of these numbers actually are, and maybe a more accurate way of looking at it, is looking at asylum applications that the UK gets. Um, and it is pretty much now, in the last five years, back to where it was at a previous peak 20 years ago in 2002, during a period of unrest in the Middle East um, again. It is, though, still significantly lower than the number of asylum applications that Germany um, and France get as well. Clearly, though, it is a policy priority for the government and has become a big um, political issue. And this um, 100,000 mark is reached in a week where the government has been focusing quite considerably um, on um, its uh, migration policies, with a lot of focus, of course, on that barge off the Dorset coast, the Bibby um, Stockholm. Um, so I think in that context, this is unfortunate. Um, Rishi Sunak two months ago said that he believed his policy of trying to stop boat crossings was working, pointing to a 20% drop um, in crossings compared to last year. It, it's around 15% lower in terms of where we are to the year so far on the total at the same point last year. So it is slightly lower than last year. It is still higher um, than the year before, though. I suppose one massive part of the government's central push to try and deter boat crossings, the Rwanda deportation policy, is still really on pause, waiting for a Supreme Court um, decision on whether it um, can go ahead. And I think given that there has not been much visible moving in terms of Rwanda and, and that boat crossings are still increasing, you are starting to get some calls from the right of the Tory party for more hardline measures to come in. There's people like Jonathan Gullis talking about bringing back, um, trying to um, revive the pushback policy of almost turning boats around in the channel towards French waters. Um, that was dropped by the government amid legal concerns and ethical concerns as well. There was a lot of concerns from border force officers as well about um, the morality um, of that. Um, there also has been a degree of conversation about whether the UK should leave the European Convention on Human Rights in light of what it might mean for the Rwanda policy. I think the baseline to this really is that one of the Rishi Sunak's five priorities was to stop the boats and by any measure at the moment that's just not happening. Rob Powell, thanks so much for that perspective. Let's get out to uh, Sadia now, as I said, uh, is uh, live in Dover. And Sadia, so much of the, the focus, of course, has been uh, over the course of this year's numbers, whether they've improved only slightly year over year, but because of government policy or simply because of the weather uh, and uh, whether or not uh, just a slightly less good summer had uh, been a key factor for the numbers being low. Yesterday was great weather and it was the highest day of crossings this year. Yeah, it's exactly that, isn't it, Alfred? Because those records began in 2018, and that year there were only 299 uh, small boat crossings um, here, and that figure last year went up to 45,755. That shows you that this is a growing situation for the government. It's not something that is going away easily. Now, the situation in Dover is evolving. There was a time when we'd come here and we'd see migrants uh, coming up to the shore themselves. Uh, it, there was a lot of activity going on. Uh, even in this dock behind me, there'd be lots of boats lined up all the time. That has slightly changed uh, as policies have come into place. And now there's a lot of control on the water. It's meant to be a lot of control on the water between French and British patrols uh, who try and stop those, cross th those boats before they reach the shore. But 
certainly what we're seeing is that that isn't uh, really changing much because we're still seeing those numbers 755 yesterday as you say the highest figure this year and as you pointed out there, that is very much weather dependent because it was zero the day before and it was zero the day before that and zero the day before that. And all three of those days we know uh, we had wet weather, uh, not great conditions uh, for sailing. And we know that when the temperature is better and the conditions are clear, we see more of those crossings. So it really does indicate that uh, it, you know, it's up to what the weather is dictating and also how the people smuggling networks, when and um, what days they decide these boats to, uh, to come, that, it act that we see those numbers, because it doesn't seem to be anything in terms of the government's deterrent policies that are stopping these numbers. We're still seeing very high numbers. Sadia, thank you.